Assassin's Creed 2 Thoughts. Okay, so before anyone jumps on me for any of what I'm about to say and stating that, you know, oh, it's in the collectible somewhere, I haven't collected all the collectibles. I might at some point, but I haven't yet. So, anyway, questions. Why the Altair cameo? I honestly didn't see any point to it. The first chick I saw after that point, I think the robber, you know, the one who gets an arrow through the leg, which apparently damages her way more than whenever you get an arrow, even if you take one to, you know, the shoulder or the chest, whatever. I really thought that she was like this version's incarnation. Yeah, something like that. That she was like the 2.0 of, you know, that chick. Was that chick even in the first game? I, I'll admit I don't remember everything from the first game, but I don't recall her at all. Anyway. So, we end with the revelation that, you know, there are gods down there, or at least holograms of Minerva, and the whole thing with the Prophet, and I suppose we're supposed to take from that that, of course, he was going to get there, and he was the only one who would get there, you know, because he's the Prophet, and it's the prophecy. For about, I don't know, a couple of seconds at least, maybe a full half minute of her clearly not talking to him, but looking at the camera, I honestly thought that they were intentionally like breaking the fourth wall. I guess they were just toying with that, because really she was talking to Desmond, who I had honestly forgotten about because we hardly ever see him wake up in this one. You know, he wakes up that one time, then he hallucinates a little bit, then he remembers Altair, you know, and, you know, the whole laying down the hay thing with her, and, yeah, anyway, I guess the whole him waking up over and over in the first game was that they didn't quite, I don't know, have the tech to have him not have to wake up over and over, or they thought it was a good idea, or they needed you know, that thing of you, over time, you know, getting to that final bit in the first one. I'm not going to give it away in case anyone watching this has played the second game and has not played the first game. So anyway, yes, we get more feeding of the this specific type of person who, you know, I, I suppose that one could just look at it and say it's fine, you know, those people need an outlet too. But personally, I really do think that it's a bad idea to feed the people, feed their neuroses, feed the neuroses of the people who insist on believing that the world is going to end, in fact, really soon. I did you know, silently wonder what was going to be preached to me when she said, oh, you have to listen to this, you know. I, don't know, I guess it could have been worse. I'm not really sure I would have minded if it had just been, like, a green message, you know, if it had just been, you know, you really need to take more care of nature. But no, instead, it's the sun is going to destroy you, and we're not going to give away how you can prevent it until the next game. I don't know if they... I haven't played, you know, what's it called? Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood yet. Maybe I will, eventually. So anyway... The final battle... Again, just fencing. I actually think, yeah, I think I like the one the, uh, at the end of the first Assassin's Creed better. I think that one, it was okay. You know, this one, it was just fencing and fencing and fencing. 
Not even sure what the point of the clones was, because it still seemed to take just forever taking Rodrigo out. I think that was his name. Yeah. Relatively cool that you get to perform a hit inside, you know, the Vatican, but... And I think it would have just been more fun if it had been, like, a proper, you know, stealth kind of thing. If it... In general, I think it should gear more towards stealth. Anyway, I think that's all for this video.